In tonight's reading, St. Paul names names. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in, Union, in Unionville, Michigan on this Tuesday, the 3rd of October in the year of our Lord 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we, be, as we end our day, nearly at the beginning of this week, with God's Word and prayer. As we do, this is now week 40, day 2 of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to 2 Timothy chapter 1. So it's uh, obviously the books of the New Testament are getting shorter generally, although um, we'll, when we get to the book of Hebrews shortly, that's a longer one again. The book of Revelation, also a longer one. But uh, for the time being, we'll, we'll kind of get shorter and shorter um, as we work through the rest of Paul's epistles. Uh, and we've finished his first letter to Timothy. That letter was for the purpose of encouraging him personally and also as a young pastor. Second Timothy it has a much different tone. Some of the same topics. It's going to sound familiar. It's going to sound similar in a number of different ways, but with a big difference. The difference is that Paul is waiting to be executed. This is his farewell letter to... Uh, somebody that he considers a, a son in the faith. He's, he considers himself a father in the faith to Timothy. And so Paul is writing this with a, with really just the most beautiful tone and intent. It's saying farewell, at least for now, to Timothy. These are Paul's last words. He assumes that they will be his last words to Timothy. And so they take on an added meaning in that way. Uh, so let's turn to our text. Second Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of the life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience, as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. As I remember your, your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, dwells in you as well. For this reason I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us, and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher, which is why I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. Follow the pattern of the sound words that you heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. You are aware that all who are in Asia turned away from me, among whom are Phygelus and Hermogenes. May the Lord grant mercy to the household Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. But when he arrived in Rome, he searched for me constantly and found me. May the Lord grant him to find mercy from the Lord on that day. And you know, and you well know, all the service he rendered 
at Ephesus. Thus far, 2 Timothy chapter 1. So, we can certainly already see some of the some of the influence of the fact that he realizes perfectly well that that he is getting ready to die. He talks very powerfully here about the promise of the resurrection, uh, talking about our Savior Jesus Christ, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, for which I was appointed a preacher and teacher. That has been the message that he has been preaching for his whole ministry. And now also, that is the message in which he himself trusts. So we'll continue to hear that beautiful that beautiful message of, of not just the, the power of the gospel in general, but the power of the gospel for him. And I do need to, to comment on that, that verse 14, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Notice, that, that itself is a powerful statement, but notice what he's just said. I am not ashamed as I face death, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me. So, there's a, a beautiful, beautiful uh, legacy that Paul is laying out here. That he that a deposit has been entrusted to him, a deposit of the message of the gospel, that confession of faith. He has passed that confession on to Timothy. And that, uh, that deposit has not only been guarded by him, but that the one he believes in has guarded that testimony, that deposit in him. That's the background for Paul encouraging Timothy to guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Now, those are all things that we'll come back to, ideas that we'll come back to later. We'll continue to see him speak very beautifully about his confidence in the face of death, including culminating in those wonderful words, I have, I have fought the good fight, I have run the race, I have kept the faith. And now there is stored up for me the, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory beyond all comparison. Just that amazing, amazing testimony. And I look forward to getting into that further because not only does the way we live confess our faith, but the way we die confesses our faith too. We'll come back to that later. But very briefly, and this is just a brief point, which is part of why I took time touching on those other points as well. Uh, verse 15, he calls out Figilus and Hermogenes. He calls them out by name. In 1 Timothy also, he warns against the teaching of different individuals. Here we see Paul calling out people by name. Now that's something that we shy away from in our day. That seems rude to us. But it really is necessary. And even if we're not calling out names, calling out people by name, uh, it, it seems rude to us to point out where others are wrong, to point out where they are teaching falsely. That itself seems wrong, seems rude, seems inappropriate to us, because we want to we want to focus on the positives. That's the that's the emphasis in our day. But isn't that part of guarding the good deposit that has been entrusted to us? You can't confess the truth unless you point out errors. 
You cannot confess the truth unless you point out falsehood. You cannot confess the truth unless you distinguish between the truth and what's not true. And calling out thy name is sometimes required. So that's the that's the, the really the, the main point I wanted to touch on there. That even though this is done simply, you know, personally, individually, in a letter from Paul to a dear friend, this is intended for a wider audience. And he does the same thing in, in other letters that are not to an individual, but to entire groups. And it's not something we should revel in, but it is something that we should be willing and ready and able to do in order to hold on to that deposit entrusted to us, which, I guess, let's, let's finish that thought. Let's take that all the way. That good deposit is Jesus Christ. That's what you have been, what you have received, and the deposit that you have been entrusted. We have been given the opportunity to cherish and hold fast to Jesus Christ. Let's close with Luke 3's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, as always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you tomorrow at the same time. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.